What's going on, everybody? It's Car Titan here once again. My good friend, Brother Sony. Say hello to the people. Yo, what up, Cigar Fam? And today we are doing an episode specifically for our beginner audience. Brother Sony, you want to tell them a little bit about what we got in store for today? Yo, you know what? Cigar Titans are bringing you today. And actually, we figured out why we're going to do this video soon. It's our first ever how to smoke a cigar video. You ready to get started? Let's rock. Dumb. Hey, welcome back everybody. So like we said at the beginning of the video, this episode is going to be specifically targeted towards the beginner, the beginner cigar smoker. Uh, Brother Stogie, what do you think we should focus on first? Right now, I think we should just focus on the technicalities of uh, pretty much what are we looking for when we go into a humidor, whether it be uh, you know, a franchise store or a cigar lounge, how to properly cut it, how to properly toast it, and how to properly enjoy it. Speaking of toasting, it is hot as balls out today. Hey, so as y'all see, <laughs> I got shorts on. I grabbed that hat, dusted off the, the rim of it, because about three days ago it was what, 67? Yeah, now it's almost no 107. <laughs> so, good old California weather for you. So, I was bundled up in a jacket. Now I'm sweating on my pits. All right, so, <laughs> welcome to Cali, baby. Yeah, there was definitely no in between. So, this video today is really, you know, uh, our opinion. It's going to be Brother Stogie and Cigar Titan's opinion on how to smoke a cigar. Take it for what it's worth. You know, everything we're going to talk about today doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, it's the right way or the only way to smoke a cigar. This is simply just more of a reflection on how we got started smoking cigars. You know, we want to pass some of that knowledge on to you guys. That's it. So, Brother Stogie, you talked a little bit about, you know, where you should start off, you know, when you're first looking to get into cigars and you mentioned humidors you know why would you you know why would going to a humidor or a, rather more a cigar lounge or a cigar shop be the way to go as opposed to going to like a gas station or something like that well you know i'm, I'm getting ready to base this off of the followers that we have on you know, our youtube channel and you know in our instagram pages and on my brother on the source stogie um uh, we've gotten a lot of oh cigar type at instagram so we've got a lot of questions about people's fears. Um, you know, they, they, they want to smoke cigars, but they, they don't really want to go in or don't, they don't feel comfortable. Um, let's just cover that right now. Do not feel embarrassed. Um, it is a little uneasy because, you know, you do go in and you have you know, thousands of cigar brands and you, you just want to say the right things. Don't worry about none of that. Um, the right tobacconist or the right, you know, owners of a cigar lounge, cigar shop, they will understand that, that you're new to the game. So go in there with your fresh virgin cigar, you know, <laughs> verbiage and just ask for what you want. Um, tell them, you know, you're new, you don't want to start off strong. And this is just something you can say off on your own. Uh, want some mild or probably something really soft, maybe sweet, something that you know that you'll enjoy. Don't, you know, a recommendation from us or from me, don't say, well, what do you like? I'll smoke that because right. what someone else likes or what Cigar Titan likes, I might not like and vice versa. And you could be talking to a more seasoned cigar smoker at that time who doesn't realize that maybe you're new to the game and you're just trying to get into it. But like Brother Stogie said, any good tobacconist, um, cigar shop owner, cigar lounge owner uh, is always going to be happy to you know, bestow their knowledge on you for where you should start you know your cigar journey lots of great sticks you know to start off with brother still you mentioned lighter blends i definitely think that's the way to go uh, today i'm smoking uh padilla finest hour this is a 5 by 52 stick uh, robusto size which is a very good uh, size for a beginner smoke you probably don't want to start off with something that's a 60 ring gauge and up 
Uh, you probably don't want to start off with something that's the size of a Churchill. You really kind of want to acclimate yourself to whatever you know cigar it is uh, that you're trying for the first time and give yourself a chance and your palate a chance to adapt to that before you go diving in head first on something big. Exactly, and, and so while listening to him speak, if you're brand new to our channel or brand new to cigars, period, and you hear all this verbiage he just spewed out, which is usually happen if you walk into a cigar shop, you learn all these Churchills and Toros and Ring. What, what the good, hell does that, that mean? That's a good point, brother. Stoker. Cigar Times, can y'all explain some of this for us? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so I have here, I'm smoking. A Don Chico, okay, and this is a Toro, okay, ring gauge about 48, six inches in length, you know, so six, seven inches in, to speak. Uh, boom, so, boom, that's my, I'm going to show y'all my cigar, because this is a beautiful masculine ash wrap right here. So when we say ring gauge, you know what I'm saying, to us, our titans out there, we're talking about the actual mm, diameter around, circumference, of the actual circumference. circumference of the actual <laughs> cigar. Boom, see that? So 48, mm, 48, okay? And you're talking about the length, six to seven inches, before you light, because I know I already smoked my about you know, 20 minutes already, so mine went down. But before I lit, it was about six to seven inches in length, all right? And so we go to Churchill's and Robustos and Toros, we're talking about that, the length. So six, seven, eight, nine inches. You got different names that go for those type of cigars there different sizes. So Brother Stogie, now you've purchased your cigar, you've got your cigar, you want to smoke it. What's next? What else do you need? Well, first you need that debit card information, you know what I'm saying? So you can actually purchase, <laughs> you actually get out let's of store, assume, you know Let's assume so, that the cigars have been purchased. We, we hope so. Okay, so now I mean, it's, it's time to enjoy your cigar, you know what I'm saying? What do you so, need to enjoy the cigar though? You need a cutter, you need a torch. It's so imagine if you don't if you don't have money to buy a torch like this little expensive shit right here, get some matches. Old school, get some matches, you'll be alright. Oh, oh, take the cellophane or the wrapper off of it first because you can't really smoke it. If the plastic is still on it, right? So get the plastic off, cutter, lighter. So most of the time when you go and you purchase a cigar at a uh, cigar lounge or a cigar shop, uh, the person running the shop will usually ask you if you want to cut, if you want to light, if you're planning on smoking it there. Uh, we're still in the middle of this quarantine thing, so not a lot of cigar shops are actually letting patrons sit in there and enjoy their cigars, so you may have to take it to go. But if you don't actually have you know, a cutter or anything like that, you can ask them to cut it for you before they leave. Um, but you know, one thing, it, you wanna, if you are going to take the time to invest in this hobby, you know, I, one thing I would highly recommend if you is learn some verbiage. <laughs> but you, yes, but get a good cutter. Because if you get a cheap cutter, let's say you do one of those online orders, you know, and it comes with those free little plastic guillotine cutters, you know, the ones that do that. More often than not, those things do more damage to your cigars than they do good. They, the blades on there are not usually very sharp. Right. They tend to squeeze the end of the cigar, which can cause you know, unraveling, cracking of the wrapper, things Filler like come that. Out possibly. Yeah, so you just want to make sure that, you know, if this is something that you're going to pursue more long term, really my advice would be take the time and invest in a good quality cutter so you don't damage your cigars. So since we're on top of cutting, we're gonna cover cutting right now, okay? So you heard guillotine. For those who know what a guillotine is from back in the day, we, you know, chop, chop the heads off. We're gonna explain it to you right here. So this is my, Calibri cutter right here, okay? I bought this from, from Amazon right here. And a good thing about this bad boy has a guillotine side. Oh, I already has some, some shit in there, all right? But <laughs> guillotine, which means pretty much straight cut. Straight cut, straight cut, all right? My other side is my V cut. So pretty much you'll see, oh, get a little close. You see that? Ooh, ooh, no, ooh, now you're covered up my ooh, face. ooh, no I'm not, but you see that, that V? <laughs> that, that V cut right there? Ooh, see how smooth that is? It's a V cut, all right? So pretty much you'll put this cut on your cigar. And we'll put the links for all of the cutters we have and everything down below in the description if you want to look at getting, you know, a, a cutter similar to the ones that we have. I think these at the time, you know, at least that I bought mine, it was around 70 bucks or something for this cutter. Very hefty, very weighty. Uh, it doesn't feel fragile or light in the hand at all. And a lighter is something that you, may not necessarily need to invest in. 
right away. Um, you know, there's no right or wrong way really to light your cigar as long as you're not, you know, just trying to ignite the first two inches of your cigar to get it right. going. Um, really what you wanna do is take the time, toast your cigar. Butane jet type lighters typically work best, you know, to each their own. Uh, some people use the Zippo lighters, you know, other people are very much against using Zippo lighters to light their cigars just because they say that they can taste the butane uh, or the lighter fluid on their cigars. Again, it's personal preference, whatever works for you. Um, you know, I, I personally prefer the jets. They're easy. Um, if you're out in, you know, outside enjoying a smoke or something like that, you want something that's a little bit more windproof, that's not gonna blow, you know, if a nice little gust of wind comes through, it's not gonna blow out. Uh, something that can maintain a good flame while you're lighting your cigar. So I'm just kind of show you guys out there. So when we're talking about your proper lighting techniques, you know, so pretend this is a cigar you haven't lit yet, and here's your torch. So generally, you want to stay about about here, especially with a torch lighter. And you know, you count if you want it, you want kind of circulate. You know, everything's about to even burn. So if you don't burn, if you don't toast your cigar evenly in the beginning, you're gonna have issues when you actually start smoking. So you can either you know, rotate your cigar, or you can rotate your torch, get it toast up, look at it. When you see most of the embers turn orange, that's when you'll go ahead, bring it to your mouth, you'll continue to toast, but you'll be dragging at the same time now. And that's how you get your true light on your cigar to actually begin smoking your cigar. And if you guys have better lighting techniques, we'd love to hear about it. Comment now below and let us know what some of your personal lighting techniques are when you're enjoying a cigar. We'd love to hear from you. All right, cigar fam. So we didn't told you it's, it's hot out here now. You know what I'm saying? So we went from uh, mid post winter straight into summer, 67 to 107. <laughs> you know? So I mean, I'm not really a hot, hot, hot person. I don't like the hot heat. You know? Uh, this guy does. Um, but the best part about the heat in summertime is the bugs that come around. Not because I like to catch them, put them in jars and shit for you know investigation, but for this guy right here, you know what I'm saying? So, get this real thing, you see, look, see masking, see the beard and shit, you see, you see that right there, it's all, the hair is all nicely ooh, combed over and shit, right? <laughs> Don't let that fool you though, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just let a moth come into this doggy den right here, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause I mean, in my eyes, you know, in others, moth like, you know? No, there, there's very much a difference between a small, tiny little moth and the dragon pterodactyl type moths we get here. So we know those don't exist, but leave it to this guy. You know, those who are old enough, you got Mothra from Godzilla. That's what the moth looks like in his eyes. So shoes, cigar, humidor cases, bottles of whiskey being thrown around. This is a, a damn moth, you know, but that's the fun part of us over time over here. Kelly. Moths, so beetles, summer can keep them. I don't like them. I, I'm not. I'm not an insect person, just and keep them away. Hey, from me. you know how some men would be like, especially if we got a lady friend around and shit. He's like, <laughs> you know, but if you scare us, but you know, we ain't gonna trip. We gonna, we gonna post stuff, you know, and, and pretend like we, we don't care. Nah, not him. He, he gonna <laughs> screech <laughs> and, and let out his manly grunt no matter who around. I have no shame. You know, I will take the closest body to me and throw them in the line of fire or to allow me enough him. time to get away. Yeah, so, <laughs> mm -hmm. That's part of body damn mopper beetles and shit in California. If at all possible, try not to extinguish your cigar. Cigars are really meant to be enjoyed from the beginning, you know, from the light to the finish. They're not meant to be put out, you know, but again, that's personal preference. I've seen people put them out to enjoy them later. They'll cut the tips off at the end and then relight them later. Uh, for me personally, that's not something that I like doing just because the cigar has a much different flavor profile after you do something like that. One thing for sure that you absolutely never ever want to do, this is undisputed, no matter who you talk to, is take a pre-lit cigar and put it back in your humidor. Do not ever do that. That will change the aroma of your humidor. That could possibly change the flavor profile of the other cigars in your humidor. So never take a cigar that has been lit before if it's something you didn't finish and attempt to put it back in your humidor to save it for later. If you're not gonna finish it then, you know, and you're not gonna get around to it for that day, that's it. Call it, 
And usually that's the number one reason why you don't engage in an already pre-lit cigar, period. It changes the whole flavor profile of that cigar, whether you put it back in the humidor or not. Especially the ones that try to, you know, recut it, you know, or cut it again, stick it back in the cellophane. You're just changing the whole element of when the cigar started. Yeah, so for something like this, this will probably take me about an hour to smoke. If you're a you know quick smoker, you can probably burn through something like this in about 45 minutes. Your Churchill cigars, again, depending on the ring gauge of the cigar and everything else, like Brother Stogie said, could take probably up to about two hours. Again, just depending on what you're doing as you're enjoying the cigar, if you're puffing on it frequently, if you're not puffing on it, all of those things play a factor in just how long a cigar will, will last you. And so when we talk about flavor profile, there's different ways you can you can get different notes out of your out of your story. So if you've seen you know our previous videos where we've talked about cigars and the cigars being picked out, first thing I always talk about is getting that first sniff off your cigar. Take your cigar, make love to your cigar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> be, be acquainted with your cigar. So first thing I like you want being to do, acquainted. No, you, hey, you ever get a, a nice beautiful lady and get that nice beautiful perfume on you? Before you even kiss me, you just want get a sniff out of it. <laughs> It's made your cigar, you know what I'm saying? So when I first started this Don Chico cigar, I, I smoked the wrapper very well put together. And the first notes I got out of it was coffee. Coffee, smooth notes off of it. Um, it's just a beautiful smell. So once you actually light and get your cigar going, you take those drags in, let it marinate a little bit, and then you release. By a second or two after you release your first drag or whatever, uh, you get different flavor profiles coming out. It can be cedar, it could be more coffee, it could be chocolate. And some people are just blessed with better palates and can pull and recognize flavors right away when they're you know, smoking a cigar. For some of those folks, much like myself, it takes time to kind of develop your palate to a point to where you can actually pull those flavors out of a cigar. You know, a trick that I used personally when I was starting to get into cigars to really be able to identify different flavor profiles was I would buy a cigar, I would look up a video on YouTube, much like our YouTube channel for the Stogie. Right down below. <laughs> right down below. Uh, and I would look for cigars that other, you know, people were smoking and giving reviews on. Um, and then they would talk about the different flavor profiles that they were getting from their cigars. And I would try to associate the flavors I was getting out of that cigar with the flavors you know, that the person on the video giving the review was giving uh, for the cigar. So that's one way to go about, you know, developing your palate. And in time to test yourself, you use the same method, this perfect method that Cigar Titan just mentioned right now. What you do is, after you got those flavor notes that you heard from other people, you know what I'm saying, and you taste the joys, but okay, I think I might taste that. Mm -hmm. Try another one, and on your own, after you're taking your drag, see what flavor profiles hit you. And then go look up that cigar and see another person that's done a review on that cigar and see if you have the same notes. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you start catching on to your own flavor palette and be able to list off notes yourself. Yeah, and no two people are ever going to enjoy a cigar exactly the same way. No two people are ever going to pull the exact same flavors out of a cigar. You know, if you're ordering cigars online, a lot of times those cigars, especially if you're a part of a cigar club or something like that, they'll send out a pamphlet that'll give you the flavor profiles in the cigar and they'll tell you, you know, what's in there. It's a good way to kind of, again, acclimate yourself, you know, in your palate to recognizing flavors. Eventually you get to a point to where, you know, you've developed your palate enough and you want to be able to pull those flavors out of the cigar yourself and you want to see like, okay, let's, let me see what kind of flavor notes I get out of the cigar first before I look at the description of the cigar and then see how close you are. And people associate different flavors with different things. I've heard people use, you know, bread. You know, that's one. I've heard people use like, pe like black pepper, white pepper, uh, cayenne pepper is different types of flavors when talking about a cigar. Even leather. Yeah, leather. So Cedar, yep. almond. Coffee, chocolate, dark chocolate, yep. no chocolate, honey chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so we touched a little bit on the flavors of the cigar. Uh, we've touched a little bit on how long a cigar lasts, how long you can expect to smoke a cigar. But let's where are some other places our beginner audience out there can go to get more information on cigars? See, I know some of y'all, you know, first time was a watch, they like, you know, y'all mentioned autumn big words at the beginning, Church Hills and Toro. I'm not gonna remember this shit. So check this out, we got you. You know, um, I had to look up and research some things on my own to kind of know my way around the Cigar Society. And actually the first publication I picked up was Cigar Fishing Out Magazine. 
you can go through there not only and you know enjoy the societal <laughs> the, the, the community aspect I of I would say the articles. Well, no, I don't talk about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, the, the community of what, what they publish in, in those articles as far as you know, the famous people they bring in who smoke cigars, but pretty educational at that they as do well. Like, almost like biopics on different celebrities and people in the industry and things like that. It's a great magazine to kind of cut your teeth on. It's, it's very, very classy, very, uh, very informative. I, I enjoy it. As well as the knowledge in there. Also, off of Amazon, you can get one of these. What's that, brother Stoney? I'm gonna show you. So, take this out. <laughs> this is a cigar guy. So pretty much what this is, my wife bought me this when we first started our whole cigar Titans venture. She was like, I want, I want my baby to be knowledgeable, you know what I'm saying? That's exactly That's what good wife. Right? You know what I'm That's saying? She has a support system right there. That's right. So what this so what this is, so you got one, two, three, four pages. All right, so this is a whole, I hung this up by my humidor, by my whiskey on the wall right there. So just in case I didn't know what something was for like Toro and Churchill, I went here. Give a little history of cigars, you know, like terms with, with Cohiba, what, what the true meaning of Cohiba or Zycar is. It's all in here. The ring gauges we spoke about in the beginning of the video, it's all in here. But you know, it's all, when it's all said and done, we want to know a little something, something about cigars. You just go ahead and open up your YouTube app. That search engine, click in Cigar <laughs> Titan. <laughs> that red button that's right down here below. Or over here, Hit like subscribe, that. and guess what? We gonna take care of you. That's right. So, so we've gone over a lot today. I think one last thing I'd like us to cover on the how-to. We may do another how-to video here in the future. Uh, for you guys, we'd love to hear more about what it is you'd like to see in a how-to video from the Cigar Titans. Comment below, let us know what you'd like to see. Uh, but cigar etiquette, you know, and again, this is to each their own. Everybody's got their own way of doing things. There's not necessarily a right or a wrong way to do things, uh, but just some things to be mindful mindful of, uh, especially if you're going to be in a lounge or in a setting where you're around a bunch of other cigar smokers. Um, depending on where you're at, you know, one of the things you want to be mindful of is, you know, if you're just starting out, you know, with your cigar and stuff and you're finishing your cigar off, one of the things you probably don't want to do is take your cigar and kind of tamp it out in the ashtray when you're around a bunch of other cigar smokers. The smoke or the aroma that that gives off at the end or smells very much like just ash and it's not a very pleasant smell. So typically what you want to do when you get down to the nub of your cigar is you put it in the ashtray, you leave it, it goes out on its own and that's it. It's a done deal. Just like so. Just leave that's it like it. that. It'll burn out on its own. Another one I think is very important, especially in a lounge setting, or even just right here next to your boy. You know, you having a conversation, you know, chop, you know, chopping it up. You know, you take your first drag. What you don't want to do is puff that smoke into the duration of who you're talking to. Right. You know what I'm saying? So most lounges Be have, have nice humidification systems. Guess what? They're taking the smoke right out of the air. So, like, see that dumb shit right there? <laughs> Now you know I just washed my beard this morning. You know what I'm saying? That's why I wore a hat. I need to go do some dumb shit like that. You know, so my hair won't get all smoky. So don't do that, because that's like an immediate fight in the parking lot. You know? Some lounges uh, and some shops aren't. So if you're going in there and you're looking to enjoy you know, a flavored cigar. They just or might ask you to sit cigar. in the back of the bus because they don't want to smell your flavored cigar yeah. in the front of the line with their members and shit. Yeah, some some cigar shops are like that, so it just helps to be mindful of the crowd you're around and what they like and what they don't like. You don't want to go in there, you know, especially like I've seen cigarette smokers go into cigar lounges and light up their cigarettes and things like that. It's probably not the place to do it because um, it kind of ruins the aroma of what is going on in the lounge. So just a few things to be mindful of. There's probably a hundred more that Brother Stogie and I could go over today, uh, but we just don't have the time for that. So real quick before we go guys, just a couple of new things with the Cigar Titan YouTube channel. So we finally hit our 300 subscriber mark. 
So thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. We really do appreciate yes. the love and support uh, from our cigar family. Thank you so much. A couple of new things that are coming, Brother Stogie. We've got a new logo. Yes, we are coming with some new graphic art for y'all to enjoy when I come over to our page. So, and just to let you know, we are, we are growing, we're pushing forward, and we're bringing all of our subscribers and our future subscribers along with us. That's right, and we'll, you know, post out what the new logos and the new designs are gonna look like on our social media accounts you can follow. <laughs> hey man, I hope you guys enjoyed this how-to video. We really did, we thought we bought some knowledgeable information for you guys. Hey, if you're new to our channel, please hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends too, come on, watch the video right on your own, like your laptop or something, so they won't be sharing. So they can also hit that subscribe button. It really helps out our channel. Um, it helps us grow more so we can be able to bring you guys more content. And also, hit that bell notification. Go on TSA, hey, for all the Apple users, go to your notifications, go to YouTube, turn on your notifications so you can get a new notification every time we put up a new video. And until next time, baby! <laughs> live how you smoke, smoke how you live. And that's smooth, baby. Take care, everybody.